And as we celebrate Black History Month, a home once gifted to a freed New Jersey slave was on the brink of demolition. Its history and significance to the community sent to disappear with it. That is, until local activists stepped in, determined to preserve the home and its story for generations to come. Senior correspondent Joanna Gagas reports. We are the new proud owners of 369 Claremont Avenue. They are the friends of the Howe House, an unassuming little house nestled between two much larger, pretty typical Montclair homes. But packed inside this tiny home is a massive history of slavery, freedom, and the beginnings of black home ownership in Montclair. This home has such significant importance to the community of Montclair, to African Americans, to the state of New Jersey, and I think to the story of the journey of African Americans in the U.S. as well. That's because this home was owned by Major Nathaniel Crane in the early 1800s. He did something unusual for the time. Upon his death, he left the home and six acres of land to James Howe, a slave who'd served Crane for nearly a decade before Crane freed him. Over time, that six acres has changed this town. Parts of it were sold off. Uh, next door, another family, free black family, the Olivers, moved in. Uh, later on, the two children of James and Susan Howe, Henry and Delilah, also had properties on the original six acres. So it was a, you know, a critical kind of a seed that led to, you know, a black community in other parts of Montclair. So and this was a critical, you know, part of the development of, of Black Montclair. But the home that survived proposed demolitions in the past was recently listed for sale as an investment property, meaning the new owners would likely tear it down. That's when the Friends of the Howe House formed. We put in an offer and somebody else came in um, with a stronger offer than we did and we thought it was all lost, it was done. But luckily we were able to secure the home, put in another offer with the help of bridge builders uh, to be able to purchase the home. And after years of uncertainty around the home's future, this community took a moment to celebrate their victory. <laughs> Very important, keeping the history. Uh, you know, we've heard so much about history being uh, wiped off of books and records and things of that nature. But uh, this is something that has to stand. There's great support amongst the community. And, uh, you know, it's just, in this being uh, Black History Month, okay, you got to get that plug in there. Uh, this is just a beautiful, beautiful event. The African Americans specifically in this town have honored this home for years, calling it the Freed Slave House. And there were many projects over the years to make sure that it was protected and preserved. Their success was the combined effort of many groups coming together, but it's going to take that same effort to pay back the bridge builder's loan, restore the home, and begin the next phase of creating a cultural and educational center here. We are in the process of gathering community input because again, at the end of the day, our final mission is to return this home to the community where we can open the doors for people to come visit the home, learn about the history of James Howe and African Americans in Montclair, and also bring light to slavery in New Jersey that so many people know little about. Right now, there are tenants in the home, so they have a lease with us currently. Uh, when that lease is expired, um, talks will then be around restoring the home. Making sure that we are replacing it with the same exact material to keep its historical, you know, status. The friends of the Howe House expect it'll take about two years before they can open this door to the public and start sharing the incredible history and significance of this home. In Montclair, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.